Nice to meet you here in Nuremberg at Duak 2010. It's great to be here. Thanks for inviting me back. Yeah, we are really proud if, that you are, uh, give us a second chance here for a keynote and for lessons additional. So uh, we are really uh, happy to, to can involve you in our program and to hear new and uh, for us very important uh, statements regarding PLC equal development. Thanks. Yeah. So today I just want to ask you some questions that are out of the German user uh, community and uh, they would like to know uh, what do you think, which PLC equal new features from the last database uh, 11 GR2 uh, are really important or are there important new features and what kind of features are there? Well, I think in general the Oracle 11 release, 11G release 1 and 2, were dominated not so much by PL SQL feature development. So there are some significant enhancements, but by and large I think the effort was more in the uh, automated database administration and especially the addition-based redefinition. So the ability to now be able to hot patch PL SQL code while the application is still running. That's certainly an amazingly important feature. It's kind of related to PL SQL, but for most PL SQL developers per se, it probably won't have that much impact in their lives. So big for Oracle and big for the Oracle, uh, for the database administration and, and application management uh, challenges that they face. Uh, but from the PL SQL developer standpoint, I think it's pretty clear that the number one feature is called uh, the function result cache. And this is a feature added in 11G release one with some important enhancements in release two that is a really fantastic feature, both in terms of what it does and also a nice showcase of how the PL SQL development team is it does some really nice work. So uh, in 11G release one, there's this new feature called the result cache and, and the function result cache as a special aspect of it in which you can basically tell Oracle when you create a function that they should cache the input values and the values being returned by the function. And so that if we're all working on the same database instance and we're each calling the same function, we're retrieving data that's very commonly used and doesn't change that rapidly. So it might change every five or ten minutes, but in between those five or ten minutes we're querying it tens of thousands of times across the entire user community. Well, right now we would have to go through the query execution over and over and over again. And Oracle optimizes that query execution, but still there's overhead. So now with the function result cache, every time anybody calls that function, Oracle checks to see did somebody already call that function with the same input values. <clears throat> and if so, rather than execute the function, they simply return the cached return values. It's, this is not rocket science. It's, it's caching. <laughs> uh, the neat thing about it is that it's cross-session. So for everybody connected to the same instance, they all share the cache. And if anybody changes the data in the tables upon which the cache relies, Oracle automatically detects it on commit and invalidates the cache and it starts refreshing. So you have this automatic uh, maintenance of the clean cache. You have the sharing across all the sessions and it can lead to incredible boosts in performance, say from on a particular function execution from seconds down to hundreds of seconds uh, easily. So that's a really great feature. It's, and, and the other thing about it is that it's so easy to apply. You add one keyword to the header of your function and yeah. that's it. Oh. And that's yeah. where you really see, you know, the, the challenge around the new technology is, well, one challenge is Oracle <laughs> creating it yeah. effectively. And that's, of course, a very non-trivial issue, but that's what we expect from them. Okay. okay, so they build this great new functionality. But the next big challenge is, will anybody use it? And how accessible is the technology? And there are many features in PL SQL that are really great, but effectively nobody uses because they're too difficult to get your head around. This is as trivial as can be. So I think it will have a pretty big impact in application performance in the coming years. Okay. So uh, would it mean that uh, do you think that there are uh, really existing PL SQL features that uh, the, the big community doesn't know and uh, or, or underestimate? Or um, do you yeah. think they could uh, do more with the technology which is available today? Sure, yes. It's a, it's a big problem. And I don't think it's particular to PLSQL. I think in any kind of rapidly changing environment, and of course PL SQL isn't that rapidly changing, but in any technology environment where you have a steady change, it's very difficult for developers, I think particularly, to stay on top of the new stuff and to integrate it into the way they, they build their applications. I, I can't really speak for other communities, but I can for PL SQL, and it's very clear that there are features that in some cases have been around since Oracle 8, Oracle 8i, yeah. that developers know nothing about. <laughs> or just barely get coming up to speed on, and some of them are very fundamental. Uh, just broadly speaking, collections or array-like structures in PLSQL are things that a lot of developers still don't use, and if you don't use those, you can't leverage so much of the new stuff. Yes. Then there's bulk collect for all, which are high speed, well, they're, uh, they allow you to execute 
repetitive SQL statements in PLSQL much, much faster by an order of magnitude easily. Um, those are a few that come to mind. Auth ID, current user, which is called invoker rights, is very rarely encountered. Autonomous transactions, pretty well, I think, uh, uh, understood and, and used. So yes, there's a lot of it out there. And then there's some of the more complex technologies like conditional compilation, which is uh, sort of a meta language inside PLSQL to tell the compiler which parts of your code to compile and not, which, as far as I can tell, almost no one uses. So yeah, there's, I think there's a significant challenge in the PLSQL community in that uh, maybe more so than a lot of other programming language environments, lots of PLSQL developers are not highly trained computer scientists because PLSQL is such an accessible language, a lot of people have moved into programming PLSQL with no programming background, which is fantastic. I think it's one of the greatest things about it. It mm. creates opportunities yes. for many people. But on the flip side, you don't have people who are engaged in the language in a, in a kind of a deep uh, intellectual manner. It's more like, I'm getting my job done, yeah. and I'm going home. <laughs> and that's also a really excellent philosophy. Yeah. But the, the problem with that is they tend to skim the surface of the technology and don't go exploring. And I think software managers, development team managers, often have the same situation where they don't push their developers to explore the nooks and crannies of the language and pull out everything they can. Yeah, but, but so how, it's all the manager's fault. That's what. That's yes, what of course. Out. But but uh, how how could they uh, do it better in a better way? How could managers or project managers? How could they better control uh, the kind, uh, the style of programming and the style of developing? <coughs> Uh, are there any, uh, because even they also don't know uh, the, the deep technical uh, sure. features. And I think there are actually some relatively simple things that software managers could do. Uh, one is, for example, every time a new version of Oracle comes out, obviously usually it's a very long time before they'll use it, but Oracle announces 11.1, announces 11.2, they could certainly have one of their developers and probably rotate this task through the team over, over the years to download the free version, Install it on a workstation and go exploring. You know, take a day, yeah. take two hours every week to just do some exploration of the technology, and then write a report for your teammates. I mean, that that's not a big thing, a hard thing to do, and that would instantly pull out some of that information, do an analysis. So do that. Stage one is find out what's there, play around with it, just have fun. Number two, analyze our application, figure out where it can go, and then we can stage that those improvements when we upgrade. So that's a relatively simple thing to do, I think. Um, more generally, I would say that software managers really should, for every developer on their team, say for a certain amount of time a week, let's say two hours a week, you're free to do whatever you want. You yeah. can research Oracle features. You can say, hey, I want to find out about .NET, whatever. Give them the uh, intellectual curiosity and give them the time, most importantly the time, to go exploring. And that kind of thing can reap so many benefits back into the development organization. So those are I mean, almost trivial things that a manager can do to, to encourage people to look at what's, what's out there and figure out how to pull it into their environment. So you think in reality they will uh, get better results with uh, less time uh, on producing if the... the <laughs> <laughs> That's a hard argument to manage, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> it sounds good. But uh, it, it, it seems so that uh, programmers and developers uh, need, of course, the time and they need a, f a free area to, to test and to uh, explore new features. Yeah, I uh, think in general there's a lot software managers, development managers could do to, to create a much more productive environment for developers. In general, people work under a pressure cooker. There's so much pressure on that we have no time, we're constantly behind, you have to push, push, push to get something out. And it's probably counterproductive in almost every aspect. In other words, software managers or development managers who pressure their developers to get things done quickly. In other words, the, the mantra for management is not, what's the quality of your code? Is it maintainable? It's, yeah. when will you be done and is it fast enough? The most obvious manifestations of success. So you're left with this incredible buggy application, which people are spending all their time putting out the fires on and so on. And it all I think a lot of it comes down to pressuring around time. What I recommend is that managers set as their goal that they absorb all the pressure, all the time pressure. They're the, in other words, they're the defender of their developers, and they protect their developers from those pressures. It's not like they don't have deadlines, but developers all know they've got deadlines. But they should try to cultivate an environment in which the pressure is off in which they can really focus on writing higher quality code and are given the tools to do it. Uh, and then I think the benefits will be reaped in, in many ways. But I know that's a, it's a hard thing to do, but a lot of it comes down to psychology, which I'll be talking about in my keynote actually tomorrow, yes. coding therapy <laughs> for software developers. 
Most of the biggest challenges, I think, in writing high-quality software has nothing to do with the technology. It has to do with human psychology and human physiology. Literally how we're wired to act as human beings and think has an enormous effect on software. But we okay. don't really pay attention to it. Yeah. So finally, I would uh, like to ask you about a uh, view to the future. Uh, what do you think? How, how do you expect uh, the future style and the future way how to, to uh, make database programming? Uh, what do you expect? Will there uh, uh, many uh, more changes or uh, is PL SQL the, the right way to do it also in future? Well, first of all, and so PLSQL is, is my obsession. Uh, I, I know it very well, but it's about all I know, so I can certainly talk from that perspective and give my opinions more broadly and see if they're you know, of any value. But within the PLSQL community, I'm actually rather excited about its at least near-term future. Uh, PLSQL has been, I wouldn't say stagnating, but leveling off in terms of the level of numbers of people involved, because obviously the trajectory is more to .NET, Java, the object-oriented technologies, etc. not so much database programming languages. But with Apex, with Application Express kind of exploding, yeah. at least within the Oracle community, uh, PL SQL is getting a big shot in the, in the arm. It's, I think it's actually going to be used more and more widely in the coming years than it has been for several years in the past. Plus, IBM DB2 now will execute PL SQL code. So we have a potential whole lot, and this is of course not, Oracle, not of interest to Oracle, but there's potentially a whole lot more developers coming in to the DB2 environment as they migrate, if they're able to successfully migrate off of Oracle to DB2, and they can become PLSQL developers. So from my standpoint, great. Okay. <laughs> so PLSQL is actually looking very good in terms of it continuing to be a, an important enabling technology for Oracle-based applications. I don't see that really ever changing. I think the bigger question is what's happening with database technologies yeah. and, and where a lot of companies will be going to deal with this massive explosion of data. Yes. And I, this is not my area of expertise, but I certainly <laughs> heard about the NoSQL movement, yeah. Hadoop, and other rather bizarre named databases out there. And it sounds like they're growing quite rapidly. Um, it also sounds like the technology is uh, kind of hit and miss and kind of like patching things together to hack together some sort of solution. But that's what software is always about. We have a problem. We need a solution. No matter how ugly it gets, we're going to get to that solution. And then you pay the price later on with your ugliness. Uh, so I think that Oracle will continue to be challenged in terms of it, the role it plays, but it seems like it's a sort of foundation technology now that will be around for certainly the rest of my career as a technologist and, and probably well beyond that. Okay. <laughs> Fine. Stephen, thank you for your impressions regarding PLSQL and Oracle database programming and uh, wish you a very good time and successful time here in Dovac uh, 2010 in Nuremberg and uh, wish you good success with your keynote tomorrow. Thanks very much. Thank you also. All right. Bye.